Good morning and aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. And today, we are going across the sea to Shanghai. Shanghai is how I've been told to pronounce it, but Shanghai is how lots of people pronounce it. But we are, my guest today is Jack Lee. Jack Lee is a lawyer in Shanghai, and he's also has uh, the title of President-Elect of the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. And we're going to talk about being a lawyer in Shanghai and the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. But first, I want to welcome Jack. Jack, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Ma. Good to see you. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, uh, I want to know a little bit about you first. Yeah. Okay? Who, who is Jack Lee? What, where were you born? Where did you grow up? You know, what school did you go to? Uh, first, tell me a little bit about, okay, about my, Jack Lee. My uh, English name is Jack Lee. My Chinese name is Li Zhiqiang. Li Zhiqiang? Yeah. Okay. I was born in Shanghai. I'm a typical Shanghai lander. In Shanghai dialect, we call it Sahini. Sahini. I, I, I got to learn my Chinese. Yeah, I studied in, in Shanghai. Uh, my bachelor degree was held in the East China Law School, and my uh, master degree was held in uh, Fudan University. And I practiced Chinese law in the year of 1990. And one year later, the Inter-Pacific Bar Association was established. Okay, now, let me go back. You, so you, your whole growing up as a child was in Shanghai. And then you d went to law school, or went to a law faculty? Yeah, is that what you went to? Uh, yes. And, yeah. and how did you decide to become a lawyer? What was, what, 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 is it hard to be a lawyer in China? Or uh, how, how did you become a lawyer? That was my dream when I was a middle school student. Oh. Uh, five law students from East China Law School visited our middle school and gave us a, a law lecture. I was most impressed by their speech. And I want to be a lawyer of my graduation from East China Law School. And my uh, dream is to uh, protect the legal rights and interest of all my clients, okay. no matter it's a public clients or private clients. Okay, and, and so you grew up in Shanghai and you, uh, were inspired by other young lawyers, I guess, to become a lawyer, and you studied law. And you, when did you become a lawyer again? It was 1990? In 1990. 1990. At that time, there were only 500 lawyers in Shanghai. Wow. Yeah. And what, what, you, you, is there a bar test, or how did you become a lawyer? How, oh, it's uh, need a, a lot of time to be a preparation. You need a, a four years for study law, to obtain the bachelor law degree, and after that, you should have a, a job in the law firm uh, for a one year probation. That is probation period, and you should uh, should pass the exam. Then you should have the interview with the representative from Shanghai Bar, the local bar. After the all procedures above, you can practice the law in China. And you, you said at that time there were five hundred yeah, lawyers in yeah. Shanghai. And uh, was it, it, it sounds like hard process. Was it a hard process to become a lawyer? Yes, it's very hard. I yeah. see. And then once you became a lawyer, what, what did you, dis, you know, what type of law did you practice? What type uh, you of know, did as you the do? first three years, I, uh, you know, practice every field. As I'm a young lawyer, I have no clients. Nobody trusts me. <laughs> I should work hard every day. So uh, after three years, I became the first 18 lawyers who were authorized to practice securities law in Shanghai. Wow. So I represent more big clients when they need an IPO in the Shanghai Stock Chain. And securities law, wow, that's a pretty impressive field. Uh, and you, you, you became authorized in that area. Is that for all of China? Yes, for all of China. So not, not, not just Shanghai. Yeah, not Shanghai. As that you, you know, in 1993, the China Securities Regulatory Commission was established. 
Mm. They need uh, legal requirements that lawyers who practice security law should have the license. So they uh, published a uh, regulation jointly with the Ministry of Justice okay. to approve. I remember, remember maybe uh, 200, over 200 lawyers, Chinese lawyers, also, were authorized to practice security law. In all of China? In all of China. In oh. Shanghai, there are 18 lawyers. Mm -hmm. And then what did you do? Then, then were, was that what your practice was mostly? Or? Yeah, so I uh, started the practice of corporate law, uh, corporate finance, M&A, and also IPOs. So I became a more specialized lawyer. Okay, and I noticed that you're a founding partner of Jinmao Partners. Jin Mao Partners? Yes. What is that? What is Jinmao Partners? Oh, Jin Mao, How did that come about? Uh, you, you know, the, uh, one of the tallest buildings in China, in Shanghai, is the Jinmao Tower. Oh. In Chinese, they're the same name. The Jinmao Partners uh, is a firm specialized in corporate law and international legal service. When, when was that formed? Uh, it was established in 2007, and most of our partners are the former chief uh, representative from uh, uh, big fortune 500 corporations such as IBM, Siemens, some other you know foreign uh, corporations. And are these like in-house counsel? They, they are former in-house counsel, I now see. became the uh, full-time uh, attorneys. Huh. And, and, and how did Jin Mao come about? I mean, how did you, how, how did you get together? What, 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 what uh, brought you together? Uh, the key concept of our founding partners is to provide the best service to our clients. International clients, domestic clients, corporate clients, government clients. That's our idea. And so what type of clients do you have in the, at Jin Mao? Mostly uh, corporate clients? Then? Uh, yeah, yeah, most uh, 90 percent are corporate clients. Among them, uh, over 60 percent are from overseas. Okay. Most are the United States? Uh, United States, European clients, oh. ASEAN clients, Japanese clients, Singapore clients. Yeah. Okay, now you, you've been a lawyer then for almost 30 years in, in Shanghai, right? Yeah. How has the practice of law changed in the past 15 years or so in China? What's, has it changed or what, what's been your experience? Yes, in the past 30 years, a great changes have taken place in the legal industry. We have uh, uh, many, many practicing lawyers and we enact many uh, new laws and regulations established in the field of investment finance, trade, insurance, banking, securities. And the most important issue that we have, a, I, in my point of view, we have a very good legal requirement for foreign investors who, had, who make investment in different cities and areas of China. Okay, and what, what does that mean exactly? What, what type of... Uh... Uh, this is the law, it's a newly enacted law, it's called the Foreign Investment Law. Mm -hmm. That is covering the uh, Sino Foreign Equity Joint Venture Law, Sino Foreign Contractual Joint Venture Law, and the Wholly Foreign Owned Enterprises Law. So, and you would advise foreigners who come in and want to make investments in China yes. on how to comply with the law. Yes, yes. And, and your partners too, I yes, guess. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're all in the same area, the same type of work? Yeah, almost the same, almost the same. You know the uh, Shanghai Disneyland. Yeah. That is, the, up to now, it's a unique and the first Disneyland invested in the mainland China. And to my great surprise, as you know, I'm one of the uh, legal counsel of this project mm. and also the unique legal advisor for the syndicate loan agreements for Shanghai Disneyland and only after one year after its opening it made profit wow yes measurable yeah that's yeah, great in a short period of time such <laughs> a huge project make profits so I think the uh, American investors for investment they can Success can do well easily. And it in sounds China. like what you're saying the changes you've seen are mostly commercial changes. Yeah. The law has become 
uh, more economic, more commercial. Is, is that a, am I? Yes, is yeah, I reading yeah. that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and a typical day for you in China, you're 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 in Shanghai practicing, right? What is a typical day like for you as a, Ch a Shanghai lawyer? What do you do? What do you you know? When do you get to work? When do you leave work? And what do you uh -oh. do in between? Oh, you know, uh, Shanghai is an uh, uh, international hub mm. and uh, is one of the uh, international center of economy, finance, trade, innovation. So it's uh, very easy for everybody, every practicing lawyer, Chinese lawyers, international lawyers. We have oh, 200 international law firm sets its uh, representative office in Shanghai. Wow. Yeah, two hundred. That number is bigger than in Beijing. Oh. So uh, it's very easy for us to travel all over the world. So just by staying in Shanghai. Yeah, in staying in Shanghai. <laughs> yeah, we have two uh, airports. One is Hongqiao International Airport. The other is the Putong International yeah, Airport. Yeah. And and so when you work, when you're at home in Shanghai, what time do you have to get to work? Oh, Normally. I'm very. Really? Diligent, you know, I uh, get up early, 6 a.m., then sleep uh, 11 p.m. normally. And, that, and you're working the whole time? Yeah, the whole time. And I enjoy the work. And yeah. you're communicating with your clients? I yeah, guess. With clients. Yeah. also, you know, many international travels. I well remember that for one day life, in the morning, I was in Shanghai, in, in noon, I will be in Tokyo, and in the <laughs> evening, maybe I will be in Singapore. It's very quite often. And, and that, that's the nature of your practice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, before we take our break, what is the hardest thing about being a lawyer in China? What do you think is the hardest thing? Uh, in my point of view, the hardest thing is that how to let the Chinese law go abroad, you know, we have the uh, many Chinese local clients. They go abroad. They make investment in different kind of countries and regions. But they, it's, very, it's quite difficult for them to find uh, an applicable law. I suppose them to write the governing law of China, Chinese law, in their commercial contracts. That means we can represent them in different kinds of cities together with the local international firms and lawyers. So you're trying to make uh, your clients have the familiarity yeah. of Chinese law yeah. when they go outside of yeah. China. And it's, and it's difficult to, to do that. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, difficult for them to understand. Yeah. That's what I hear you saying. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? As you know, the different jurisdiction has different type of laws and regulations. Well, and let, let's, I want to ask you one question. I mean, how is the relationship with the United States? Has this trade war had any impact with China and the, the way that Chinese feel about Americans? You know, the, uh, this year is the 40th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between China and the United States. My uh, second international trip was in 1993, that is the delegation of all China Lawyers Association to U.S. Um, I was one of the members and act as the interpreter. I think, I do think, that it's very important that Chinese and American people should work together. And Chinese lawyers and American lawyers should work together. Sounds like what you're saying is we got to know each other. Yeah. And we're going to take a break right now. Yeah. Short break. Yeah. We'll come back. And then I want to ask you more about the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. Okay. And Thank you, what, What's going to happen. Yeah. So we'll take a break right now. And we'll be back with uh, Shanghai Council, Jack Lee. Thank you. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, The Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum,
Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Aloha. Welcome back. I am Mark Schlav, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program, and I am here with Jack Lee. And the last point that Jack made was uh, in order for us to get along, we got to get to know each other. And he thinks that, uh, Jack, I, th I think I'm quoting you correctly, you, you think we, we got to meet and talk with each other and, and maybe become friends. And that would, might, uh, I hear you saying that might help resolve some of the problems that exist in the world. And one of the things that you're doing is you are the president-elect of the Inter-Pacific Bar Association, which I see as, as uh, accommodating that type of relationships, so those types of relationships. What I want to ask you is, first of all, what is the Inter-Pacific Bar Association? The Inter-Pacific Bar Association is one of the major international bar organizations in the world. It was established in the year of 1991 in the capital of Japan, Asia. And now it has uh, 2,000 members from almost 70 countries and regions. I well remember my friend, Mark. He was one of the important funding members of Inter-Pacific Bar Association. Oh, thank you. Uh, and when did you get involved with the uh, IPBA, as we you call know, it? IPBA for Chinese lawyers, I well remember that the, uh, in 2002, Hong Kong SAR hosts the annual meeting and conference. And a great delegation from China, All China Lawyers Association, attended this conference. And after that, I became a member of IPBA. So you were there? You were there. You were in Hong Kong? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and you felt this was something that you wanted to belong to and be a part of? Yes. I think this is uh, a very special international bar organization, is that people are very friendly, and people are very easy to communicate, and the people are very uh, uh, happy to work together, refer the case to each other, and share the views and topics of their different legal jurisdiction. Okay, and so there, there's many aspects I hear yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. talking about. Yeah. Okay, so you joined the IPBA. What is your current role with the IPBA? What is your current position? My current position is that to uh, serve my members. As you know, I was the uh, Jurisdiction Council member in 2016. And after 11... For China. For, for China, yes. <coughs> China JCM, we call it JCM. And only after 11 months, I became vice president of IPBA since Shanghai was selected as the hosting city of our 30th annual meeting conference in 2020. Well, how, how does that work? The, 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 the uh, council selects a city, and then uh, you choose a vice president, or? or... So that's a, a very complicated legal <laughs> okay. you know, procedure. Uh, first is the normal dating committee. Mm, I see. That's a very important committee, who uh, consists of uh, president, president-elect, vice president, and all other important officers of IPBA. They will make a decision which city Mm. will be the whole city of the next and the next year of IPBA and yeah. Media Conference. And so you right now are president-elect, right? Yeah. Of IPBA. And what do you do in that role? What, what, what oh, are your, what's your job? You know, and, and, and also the, the next uh, meeting, annual meeting of the IPBA will be in Shanghai in 2020. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. So... You're, you're, you're the president-elect, and you'll be hosting 
the next meeting in Shanghai. So this year I am very, very busy. I tell you the truth, in the past 10 months, I almost traveled 20 cities, international cities, to promote a conference, to meet with our members, to encourage them to come to Shanghai, a happy IPB gathering in the biggest city of China next April, April 20 to April 23. Okay, April 20 to April 23. What's going to happen? What, what goes on at, oh. the, at the Shanghai Annual Meeting? What, what do you got planned? The Shanghai Annual Meeting Conference, I think, will be uh, one of the most successful events in the history of IPBA. And actually, it is the first time for Shanghai to host the annual media conference of one of the leading international bar organizations since the city opened its port in 1843. What type of activities, both professional and social, are planned for We Shanghai? organize uh, many social <laughs> events. In the night of April 20, next year, a grand opening welcome event will be held in the magnificent Huangpu River Cruise. Mm. And uh, in the evening of the first day is April 21st, a delicious Chinese banquet will be held in the Fudong Shanghai International Convention Center. And uh, in the evening of April 22nd, we will organize a, a magnificent farewell event at a very special venue that is Shanghai Expo Center. There was a very big and huge terrace. You can drink, you can eat, you can share views with your friends, you can sing and dancing. Probably a new IBBA conference song will be produced. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> in our annual meeting conference next year. <laughs> oh, is, I, th I think this is a, a secret you've just shared yeah, with me. Secret, secret, okay. Yeah, secret, secret, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, and, and I really like the social activities. Yeah. Uh, to me, uh, in Asia, uh, business, a lot of it is social. Uh, how you make contacts, how you get to meet people and learn to trust them is through social activities and, and you know, j just talking at those type of events. So th those sound very good. Now, during the daytime, what type of uh, professional seminars do you have? Or is there a general idea of what, what you have uh, going on during the annual meeting? Yes, the theme of the conference is the uh, rethinking international rules and the uh, opportunities and challenges of our legal professional profession. And 80 sessions will be arranged in our. Uh, next year's annual meeting conference of IPB. 80? 80. Yeah, wow. 80. You know, we have Those 24. Those are like when, when people come and it's like, a, like seminars, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, we have a, a half day for opening ceremony mm. for the plenary session. And after that, there are all concept, concurrent you know, sessions organized by our 24 IBBA committees. And all on various topics, I uh, guess. Very topics, uh, focusing on the you know, uh, digital economy, you know, IA issues, and the uh, Belt and Road, and also the international arbitration. Why, if I am a lawyer, why should I go to Shanghai why, for the annual conference? What I think uh, Shanghai is one of, it's, it's my point of view, it's one of the global city in the world. And it's uh, 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 east of Paris. You know, <laughs> most people, no matter it's Western or Eastern, they like Shanghai. Mm. Shanghai is a very open city. Uh, Shanghai welcomes all of the people from all over the world. So as a practicing commercial lawyer, you know, IBB is a commercial lawyer's organization. Right. If you are a commercial lawyer, you should come to Shanghai. Why? Simply because you can meet the local people, local lawyers, local entrepreneurs, local uh, bankers. That is very easy to establish a platform for lawyers to know each other, to provide a service to the clients, and to uh, develop our relationship. That's very important. Mm. So do not miss Shanghai. Do not okay. miss China. I'm coming. Thank I'll you. Be there. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
you, 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 you said you've gone to 20 cities? Yeah. Wow. Where, give me some examples. What cities have you? Our cities, you know, uh, many cities in Asia is uh, Malaysia, Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Sri Lanka, and in European countries, there are many is uh, England, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Belgium, nevertheless, and uh, uh, Spain, and in the American, you know, uh, it's uh, U.S. and Chile, uh, Argentina, and the uh, Brazil, and in Australia, it's uh, New Zealand and the uh, Australian. So there are many, many uh, international cities. You, you've traveled all over yeah, to we promote. Yeah, we travel a lot and promote a conference, yeah, uh, simply I, because it, they, we have many uh, local members mm. from these uh, beautiful countries and regions. Yeah. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Um, when you're not doing securities law, yeah. living in Shanghai, and when you're not running around the world promoting IPBA, what do you do to relax? What do you... What do you do when you're not doing those things? <laughs> you know, I enjoy life. I uh, like singing. Ah. Sometimes we invite my friends to sing together. Wow. Yeah. So that's why I, we need a, a IPPA conference song oh, next I year. See. <laughs> Maybe we can invite uh, more our members to sing this uh, Everybody new song. Everybody sing together and you'll lead us. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just... Uh, that's a uh, have an idea. <laughs> we can sing together. I, you I, know, don't, I don't know if you want to hear me sing, though. That's the only thing. You are a good singer. <laughs> you will remember that in uh, Manila in 2017, the, uh, the then President Lac Terry mm. organized a very special concert. Mm. And uh, I was invited to sing a Chinese classical song. Mm. The name of this song is The Moon Represent My Heart. To my great surprise, every Philippine lawyers, he can sing the song in Mandarin. In Mandarin. You know what? That tells us a lot, doesn't it? It tells us how we are all connected. Yeah. And how yeah. a law organization can bring people together. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, um, you know, resolve some differences at times, just by singing a song. Yeah, yeah. And, and it surprised you that they knew the words. Yeah, they knew And words. probably felt the same. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. About it. Yeah. So, well, uh, I'm very happy to have had you be my guest today and talk about your background and the IPBA. And I look forward to seeing you in April Next in year. Shanghai. Thank Th you so much. Thank you very much for being my guest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are done today with Jack Lee, uh, my guest, my Shanghai Council, and we look forward to maybe doing a show from Shanghai one day. So, aloha, everybody. Thank you very much.